When we say that each subsequent part of the Grand Theft Auto series has something in common, then there will be no one who will agree otherwise. Of course, we do not mean such similarities as car theft or shooting because these are natural elements of the gameplay showing us the criminal underworld. In all this, we refer to such similarities as, for examples, locations. That is, in GTA San Andreas and in GTA 5, we have the same city at our disposal. Another similar example that characterizes almost all parts of the Grand Theft Auto series is that at the beginning, we can only move around in a specific part of the entire map. Obviously, it is often the case that, thanks to our cunning, we will be able to get to another part of the city or state. But exploring such an area is then not something very pleasant, most often due to the police trying to catch us down. What, in our opinion, is the most interesting, what deserves praise, and what will we do in this episode is that the creators have more or less taken care to present to us the reasons why we cannot get at certain points in the early stages of the game to other parts of the map. What we will start with today is the Callahan Bridge, which is present in GTA 3, GTA Advance, and GTA Liberty City stories. Starting from scratch, it is worth mentioning that we do not know exactly when the construction of this bridge began, but we do know that it was supposed to be completed in May 1998. However, the plans failed. The action of GTA Liberty City Stories takes place at the turn of May and June, and we can clearly see that the bridge is not usable. The question is, why does it look like this? Well, a big problem in the context of continuing and completing this investment were worker strikes led by Jane Hopper, which aimed at stopping the construction of this facility. Only in 2000, that is, during the events of GTA Advance, we can see that the bridge is, colloquially speaking, ready. It is true that we cannot use it right away because there are roadblocks there, but after the mission show the money, it becomes possible. We believe that the presence of roadblocks leads us to a fairly high degree of probability that we are convinced that the bridge was completed almost in 2000. And this is how we get to the action of GTA 3, that is, in the second half of October 2001, where the Callahan Bridge is teeming with life when it comes to the number of passing drivers. However, another big problem looms on the horizon, this time in the form of the Colombian cartel which is carrying out a terrorist attack shortly after the game's intro scene. As a result, Portland and Staunton Island are cut off from each other once again, and for a good few weeks. The next item on our agenda will be the situation with the Porter Tunnel. As with the Callahan Bridge, the tunnel is under construction in May 1998. Only both exits to Shoreside Vale are operating normally. The project was supposed to be finalized this year, but there were considerable delays, incidentally, again due to workers' strikes. Fights with trade unions consumed construction companies not only a lot of time, but also money. Promises were constantly made that the tunnel would be completed, which ultimately ended in failure each time. Finally, in March 2001, the Liberty Tree newspaper mentioned it in an article. Financing problems led to the fact that the implementation date was postponed to September this year in relation to the timing of GTA 3. But that was not the end of the problems, as a month later, there was an oil spill in the docks that caused further shifts. What is more, corruption scandals came to light, which caused the financial budget of the project to be significantly exceeded, as did the final date of construction. Six months after these events, it was revealed that the project office took some money from the budget of the then still active primary school in Chinatown, which was probably the reason why the institution was closed and became the old school hall we know, for example, from the mission The Fuzzball. Ultimately, the tunnel was completed sometime in late October or early November 2001. Well, it's time to go to the last blocked tunnel, the one that connects Shoreside Vale with the upstate area. Unfortunately, we don't know much about this location. However, due to the fact that there are people who are curious why this tunnel is practically inaccessible to players from the beginning of the game, we will present our assumptions to you. As we know, in GTA Liberty City stories, the tunnel is open to us, but it serves only as one of the roads leading from Cedar Grove to Cochrane Dam. In turn, in GTA Advance, this tunnel will not be found at all. Of course, quite a reasonable reason why we will not find this location in GTA Advance may be the limited processing capacity of the console on which the game was created. However, from the point of view of the presented world, 
the lack of locations can be justified by the fact of rebuilding this part of the city so that a connection between Liberty City and the mysterious ghost town is created. This makes quite a bit of sense as the tunnel to Upstate is then fully operational in 2001. In the end, Catalina, along with Claude and Miguel, somehow had to get to the bank in Ghost Town where the GTA 3 action is taking place. But after this event, the tunnel is closed again. Why? In our opinion, these are probably roadworks once again, perhaps even related to Catalina and Miguel escaping from Ghost Town to Liberty City. However, this is only one of the many possible variants. Meanwhile, now let's move on to the sunny Vice City, which in two GTA installments was plagued by serious cataclysms. It is about the fact that, within two years, the city could be completely devastated twice by a hurricane raging in the vicinity. In 1984, it was Hurricane Gordy, and in 1986, it was Hurricane Hermione. As for the second storm, it is worth mentioning that the storm reportedly devastated as many as five Caribbean islands. And another interesting fact is that near Ocean Beach, on the water, you can see three ruined wooden huts. In GTA VCS, in this place we will see as many as four wooden huts which are connected with each other by wooden bridges, and they are also in much better condition. So, it can be assumed that the reason why the huts look bad in GTA Vice City was the raging Hurricane Hermione. Moving on, we go to the state of San Andreas, where the topic will be earthquakes. Throughout the history of GTA San Andreas as we know it, a total of two earthquakes have happened, the first of which occurred in 1988. This year's earthquake was very powerful, and we can learn about it for the first time from a thicker booklet that comes with GTA San Andreas in some PC versions, of course, the boxed ones. Many tragic events took place in the San Fierro area, the effects of which can be seen already four years after the disaster. One of the most visible examples of this is the construction site, where you can see a total of five townhouses that have been razed to the ground. Not only that, most likely the earthquake was the reason why the local Zoomer gas station, which is CJ's garage now, was closed. With the information that Claude worked in this place, it is possible that this situation forced him to abandon his life in San Fierro and plan his trip to Liberty City. Another place that was also seriously affected by this incident is a fragment of the expressway, which is located near one of the Garver Bridge exits. The second earthquake in the state of San Andreas happened exactly one month before the actual events of the game, and fortunately for the locals, it wasn't that spectacular anymore. We can hear quite a lot about this event on the radio. Let's listen to an example, which is an announcement from KDST host Tommy Smith. All transit between Los Santos and the Greater Red County area is still strictly limited following last month's earthquake. Officials are not confident as to when things will open up again. Most of the messages are available in the game from the very beginning, but the last one, which appeared on WCTR News, will not be heard until after the Green Saber mission. Interestingly, reporter Richard Burns mentions in the first report that bridges were damaged as a result of the earthquake. Unfortunately, we do not know exactly which bridges are meant, but one of them may be the one at Palomino Creek. Another example of a place that has been hit by this cataclysm is a rock formation in Bone County. We can see there that one of the rocks was as if broken in half, and one of the halves did not fall to the ground, but only rested against the other rock formation, which remained intact. As a curiosity, we would like to add that in GTA San Andreas, there is a type of weather that allows earthquakes. According to the material that you will find in the description of the film, this type of weather can still be found in the final files of the game, but to run it, you need to change the value of the appropriate code from zero to a higher one. And finally, we will discuss the bridge blockage in GTA 4. As we can learn from a Liberty Tree newspaper article titled Bomb.com, the closing of the bridges was triggered in fear of a terrorist attack that could be as serious as 9-11. The flashpoint was the recording of conversations in Arabic. And although officials were unable to establish what exactly these people were saying, the city council nevertheless decided to take precautionary measures. LCPD Services Lieutenant Chuck Montress himself suggested that doing what terrorist organizations expect of us would be the best solution. Do you agree with Mr. Chuck Montress and his method? Did you know about the earthquakes mentioned? Share your opinion in the comment section and we will be very pleased to see your point of view. 
Meanwhile, that's all for today. Stay tuned for more episodes. See you soon.